Brothers and friends, Paul Cameron here from SuccessfulMasons.com and Wheaton Lodge number 269, and we are back from Grand Lodge. So today I wanted to share with you how it went, what we learned, our favorite part of the weekend, and how we can better prepare ourselves for next year. Now, if you're already a subscriber to our channel, then you saw that I posted a video prior to going to ask if anyone had any suggestions on how we can prepare for the weekend. And while that video got a bunch of likes and viewed a whole bunch of times, um, it didn't get any responses. <laughs> so then I started asking guys around here who had been there before on how we should prepare since we're first timers. And everybody to a man said, you know, just take it all in and enjoy it, which really is wonderful advice but it didn't really give us a plan <laughs> on how to approach the weekend. So we came up with our own game plan going in, and then we learned a ton about what to do and what not to do when we got there. So I thought I'd share our experience with you here so you can learn from our mistakes as well as our successes, so you can better prepare for your next Grand Lodge meeting. And I'll start with some really exciting news, uh, which you know, personally was a huge uh, thrill and I feel very, very fortunate and grateful to have been appointed to the Grand Lodge State Education Committee, which is just a, a, an extreme honor for me to get to sit and talk masonry with the amazing list of brothers uh, who are on that committee and to see my name up on the you know big screen at Grand Lodge uh, on the same list with those guys. Uh, I'm just very uh, grateful to be a part of that and really looking forward to working with them. So that was really exciting. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I'll share with you some huge mistakes that we made right from the very minute we arrived, right? And, and before I do that, first I'll introduce the guys that I went with. As you probably know, each lodge needs to send three officers to take part in the voting. So it was me as the junior warden, then we had Rich Stark, our senior warden, and unfortunately the current master of our lodge uh, had work obligations so he couldn't, um, he couldn't go with us, that he just he couldn't get out of uh, the work commitments. So going to vote in his place on his behalf was Sean Johnson, who is currently our tiler, but two years ago he was the master of our lodge and he did such a good job that we kept him there <laughs> last year. So he's a twice past master uh, and certainly knew his way around down there, a very, very experienced, as you will soon find out. Rich and I, on the other hand, we were first timers and really had no idea what to expect or, or what we were going to be doing down there. And here we are getting our picture taken with the outgoing Grandmaster of Illinois, Tony Krakow, who did a wonderful job and was always very, very generous with his time. I had the, the uh, privilege of meeting him a couple of times throughout the year at different degrees and things. Um, uh, very just a, a stand-up guy, regular, uh, good man and, and very generous with his time. Uh, so we're very pleased that we got a chance to get our picture taken with him. And then uh, there is Sean and I standing with the incoming Grandmaster, Rich is taking the picture for us. Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, and that was, it was just a huge honor that both of these men were willing to take some time with us individually when obviously they were both very, very busy uh, on that weekend, uh, but they were still willing to make time for us. So we do appreciate that. So now you know who we are, let's get to what we learned. First, lesson one make your reservations early all right you want to make sure that communication gets out to everybody as soon as you get it our lodge is typically dark until the second tuesday in september which this year was september 12th and that's when the grand lodge communication was read aloud during the communications part of that meeting when we learned that we need to have our rooms booked by september 6th at the latest <laughs> needless to say we didn't get that done um, so I got lucky and I got a room about a half a mile away from the convention center where the meeting was being held. Uh, but Rich and Sean ended up about six miles away at different hotels. And, you know, fortunately, Rich had someone to drive him to and from the event. His girlfriend was there with him and she could take him there. Sean, unfortunately, had to deal with, you know, finding a place to park and then feeding the meters and parking tickets. And, you know, just not the greatest experience and, and not the best start to our weekend. Next, as you Grand Lodge veterans know, you have to bring your own apron and the jewel of your office with you. But if you don't have a carrying case or a bag with you, then you have to roll them up and tuck them under your arm to carry with you. And when you're a half a mile away on a very windy and rainy weekend, that makes for a not so fun walk in the rain, carrying your papers and your voting cards and your umbrella against the wind 
good times, right? So my suggestion would be to bring a bag with you to carry all that stuff to and from the event. Now, again, Rich and I had never been before, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get any advice prior to going from the people that we talked to and, and the responses here. So we took a guess at the dress code, right? And I mean, since it's going to be an all-day event, I mean, starting early in the morning till late in the afternoon, what are the chances that you're going to have to be sitting there in a suit and tie all day, right? Well, it turns out the chances are pretty good, <laughs> right? So the advice that Rich wanted me to share with you was to wear a suit. Um, yes, there are some lodges that are casual there and that are casual all the time and they show up to the uh, Grand Lodge casual as well because that's the attire for their meetings. But you know what, if you're not sure, make sure everyone from your lodge is on the same page with the dress code. It seems kind of like a, a given that you don't think about talking about ahead of time. But you know, we didn't talk about it and then we ended up you know, with one of us uh, without a suit. So um, words from Rich, you know, please wear a suit. So we're off to a great start, right? We're in different hotels across the city and we don't have stuff to carry our, our things to and from the event. And one of us is not in a suit. Awesome. Now, we mentioned we came up with our own game plan for the event. So, and that was that, you know, we figured the one thing we really needed to learn that we needed the most help with was learning how to raise funds for our lodge. So the three of us were asking everyone we could how their lodge does fundraisers for their own lodge, right? Not for charities, but for themselves, because we're just trying to live off the dues that are coming in, and it's just not enough uh, for us. And literally every single person we talk to says that their lodge lives off of their investments, right? Apparently they all have a big account someplace and that they've invested really well, um, and that's great, but you know, unfortunately, we Lodge, we just we don't have that. And when when we get one, we're certainly going to ask them all who their money managers are because they're obviously doing a great job. But in the meantime, if you have any suggestions on how to create some real sustainable income for your lodge beyond just the pancake breakfasts or renting out your lodge space, which we are trying to do, um, we'd really appreciate your suggestions. So if you can comment below or send me an email if you'd rather do that, that's fine too. My email is just paul at successfulmasons.com. That would be a huge help for us. So other quick lessons uh, to think about, and then I'll share with you our favorite part of the weekend. So first, as you could probably guess, there are a bunch of vendors there selling Masonic stuff, right? You know, pins and hats and um, ties, new Masonic tie. And I did get a bag <laughs> while we were there as well. Uh, and while Rich and I were walking around dazzled by all the cool stuff there, Sean, the more experienced one of the bunch was walking around with his thinking cap on. Uh, he went into one vendor room that had pins for just about everything. I mean, they even had a basket full of dozens of past grandmaster pins. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why they would need a whole bin of those. I, there can't be a ton of those guys out there. And even if there are, I doubt they're walking through the, the stores there looking for pins. But hey, whatever. <laughs> anyway, Sean noticed that instead of just having the 25-year and 50-year Mason pins, which we all hear a lot about and we see around Lodge, they also had five-year Mason pins and 10-year Mason pins. And he thought, why don't we get a bunch of these and mail them out to our guys, right? We've been looking for ways to re-engage with our recent members who have gone inactive on us. Well, what if we sent them five-year pins or, or 10-year pins whenever it's appropriate? Maybe they might appreciate that and connect with us again. So we're going to try doing that going forward. And, and that's why it's always a good idea to have somebody with you who doesn't get distracted by all the shiny objects in the vendor rooms. So that was a great idea by Sean. Thank you for that. Another thing that experience would have enlightened us on is that in the evenings, there's a bunch of social gatherings going on. And if you find yourself in an event that's giving away free snacks and drinks and things, it's probably from an appendant body who will probably show you all the benefits of joining their group. All right? So as you might guess, based on the Grand Lodge experience of the members of our group that went, uh, Rich and I are now members of the Grotto and Sean is not. <laughs> um, but I will say that it's a great group of guys and they support a really good cause. So the reasons to not join weren't very compelling, right? So there's no regrets there. But I just wanted to let you know so you know what's coming if you find yourself at one of those events. And I think one of the most important takeaways that we learned as a lodge, um, that I found that a lot of lodges already do, uh, that Wheaton Lodge doesn't do and hasn't done in recent memory, 
is that they hold a meeting before Grand Lodge to go over all of the amendments that are going to be proposed and then get the opinion of their lodge on how they should cast their votes. You know, maybe they'll just say, hey, go vote your consciences, guys, but maybe they'll have some very strong feelings one way or the other so that you know how to vote. I mean, I know on a couple of the issues I found myself getting swayed by, you know, the arguments that were being made for and against the proposal. And I'm sitting there going, ah, oh, that's a great point. I am definitely voting for this. And then the next guy walks up and is like, oh, hmm, you know, that's a better point. I have to vote against this. And then the next guy comes up and make a, an even better point for it. Um, but if I had some thoughts from the guys in my lodge ahead of time, maybe I would have had a better idea of what to do on the issues that I wasn't sure about. So I can tell you going forward, for sure, Wheaton Lodge is going to have a conversation about all of the amendments before anybody goes down there to cast a vote. So that was a good learning experience. And if your lodge doesn't do that, I would definitely recommend you do. Now, while that was a really great experience to be a part of that voting process, literally for all three of us, our favorite part of the weekend was in getting together with so many Masons from other lodges. I mean, there's close to 1,200 Masons there. I mean, you couldn't walk anywhere in that town without running into a Mason. It was amazing, right? And for me personally, I just, I loved getting to sit down and talk with guys who I, who I kind of knew, but not really. You know, I see them from time to time at different lodges and, you know, if I'm helping out with degree, degree work or something, but I didn't really know them. Like on, on Saturday night, for example, I got to sit down with a brother I'd seen around the school of instruction from time to time and at different degrees, but I got to sit down and talk with him and his wife at length, and I feel like I really got to know them. Uh, and that, for me, was just one of the highlights of my weekend. James, if you're watching this, uh, I really appreciated that conversation. And I know that Rich and Sean had a very similar experience uh, themselves. And Rich was even saying that next year, we should try to uh, get our deacons and, and other people from Lodge uh, involved and to come down with us, especially the deacons, you know, so that that way they can not only get the experience that we were lacking before we went down there as officers for the first time, but also to get the experience of, of the fellowship of being around that many Masons, right, and getting to know them because it definitely creates an extra enthusiasm about Masonry, which is, I think, something that every lodge could benefit from. And in fact, here's a, a picture of us with the guys from Bensonville Lodge and Villa Park Lodge, really great group of guys. And just for the record, the guys in the front row of this picture on the far right and left of that, those guys are the reasons that Rich and I are now members of the Grotto. <laughs> so thank you for that, guys. I <laughs> appreciate it, actually. It was a really great time that night. So sincerely, thank you. So I think we have a good checklist uh, to work from at this point on how to prepare for Grand Lodge meetings for next year. And in fact, we have created a downloadable checklist that you can work from, print off, and use to help you prepare for your next Grand Lodge meeting, which we have available in our private blog, which you've probably heard me talk about before, but that is the fundraiser idea that we came up with for our lodge, since we don't have a bunch of investments that we're living off of, uh, it seems everybody else does. And we have a bunch of helpful tools in there for you as well from all our prior videos. And we actually, at this point, we are compiling, because we've been in communication with people from all over the world, we are compiling a best practices blog in there with ideas from lodges literally all over the world in, in, in the UK and Australia and Canada and France, I mean, all over the place. And it's ideas on how they bring in new members and how they retain their current members, how they re-engage their inactive members, even how they run their business meetings better. Just lots and lots of great stuff. So if you like what we're doing here and you want that extra information for yourself, we hope that you'll consider subscribing to that blog. It will be a huge help to Wheaton Lodge. We'd really appreciate it. And we're going to continue to put out more and more good content and add more to that blog uh, as well. So that that way, this is going to help you and your lodge, as well as us and our lodge, to become the successful Masons that we're all striving to become. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.